I was blessed to serve here from 1977 through 2000 as the assistant pastor dealing with Christian education. What did I say, 2000? No, 1977 to 1980, excuse me. <laughs> as the youth pastor in Christian education, and what an honor. Our scripture from the New Testament comes from Ephesians, and I'd like to read that now to you. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks not only for this place, but for its people. For those who have come and those who have gone, those who have nurtured us and those who have challenged us. So awaken us this day that as we add a piece of string to this wonderful tapestry, we can see that your handiwork is all around us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. When I graduated from Princeton, I was given many opportunities to interview and come to love many different types of churches, East Coast to West Coast. But I came here to interview, I thought, with Dr. McCullough, David McCullough. He reminded me that I was born the year he graduated from seminary. I said, oh, thanks, David. What impressed me is he came out of the First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood. And there was a Christian education director there, Henrietta Mears. And there was a group of young men at that time. They were called Henry's kids or boys. And they always went to Princeton. There was no choice. That impressed me because of what I knew about Hollywood Pres and going to college in Southern California knowing the close relationship it had to a church camp not far from the University of Redlands. So I came prepared, thinking about youth programming and things that I would like to try to instill, and David and I hit it off well. At the end of my second day interviewing with him, he says, well, my interview with you is not the important one. Oh, who do I need to meet with? Well, there's a lady whose office is on the second level, down at the end of the hallway. This is your real interview. It's with Dorothy Calistro. <laughs> and I met with Dorothy. What a wonderful lady. She was so excited about meeting a potential youth pastor. And she shared with me her role as clerk and her role in the administration of the church. She knew the history. Doug, as I heard what you said on the video about every nook and cranny, she preceded you in knowing about every single brick and every place. I was a little intimidated until she just disarmed me with her love for Jesus Christ and the love of this congregation. And then I met a character, and I choose that word carefully. There was a guy here by the name of Paul Fleckenstein. Anybody remember Paul? He was the organist and choir director and had an infectious laugh that circulated ev into every cell of your body. And myself being a, a, a vocalist and my wife being an organist, Paul and Becky hit it off well, and Paul made a laugh that he said, well, I'm a Catholic serving in the Presbyterian church. I got to make sure Becky as a Presbyterian can serve at the cathedral. So, as Paul was here, Becky was over there for our time here, and what a joy that was. But those three convinced me that this might be the place that I would see, see and feel my first call, professional call to ministry. But it, once again, it wasn't the building, it was people. A couple of the videos and a couple of people have mentioned the nativity scene at Christmas time. Well, let me tell you the story behind the scenes, and I think it was Bill Alessio. Bill, where you? I, I just saw you. They did have these outfits for the little ones. We had about 30 of them, and they were dressed up with this hood that made them look like lambs. 
And I think it was the Franklins or somebody else provided some hay bales and we had a nativity scene. Jerry Weber was the Joseph and the Blower kids were there and the kids were just being great and we had practiced the day before. They practiced all that they wanted to say and got the lines down, but something happened. All of a sudden, the kids had fun with the hay. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it was the sheep taking over the show. <laughs> baby Jesus, which was a baby doll, got covered up. Mary and Joseph didn't know what to do. And all I could do is get up and say at the end of the show, I think the first nativity scene was like this too. It was a little confusing. But God saw through that. Those were wonderful days. People like the Webbers, people like the Franklins, Doug and Cheryl Hunt, the Elysios, the Blowers. My first Sunday here where I had a chance to preach, Bob Blower, I don't know, is Bob here? I don't know if Bob's here today or not. Bob is here. Bob said, heard you played college ball. And I said, yes, sir, I did. You're coming with me to a meeting on Tuesday night. I said, really? He says, yeah, it's a bunch of football officials. Bob played, I think, at the College of Idaho, didn't you? University of Idaho. I didn't go to a big D1 school, D2. I went to a small school in Southern Cal. And so we went, and with about 200 other gentlemen there, no women officials yet, I became a football official, which was another career I had for 42 years. And Bob, I will be eternally and forever thankful for that introduction. And it has been an honor to work with so many of, of your crew, but so many different crews throughout the time. But as I thought about all these stories and all these individuals, it's just not my memory. I want you to think about those people that weave themselves with the love of Christ into your life. And I want you to get a couple of those people's names in your head right now. Because I think what we have done and what God has done in this ministry has created a wonderful tapestry. And if you've been to the big museums or the De Young in San Francisco, tapestries always tell a story. And the tapestry of this church includes the threads that you have weaved into it. So I want you to say out loud the name first or second or both of them of the people that have weaved their spiritual lives with the gift of God into your lives. What families weave themselves into your lives? Any names? Rosen? Speak up louder so we can hear you. Eve Rozier. Absolutely. Kathy White. Kathy White. I hope you... Thank you. So all of those have weaved into this wonderful tapestry. And the wonderful thing is, it's not complete. We are still weaving into that storyboard of a tapestry. And you have played an important role. For how many years or how few days, it doesn't matter. Your thread is into that wonderful tapestry. May God continue to bless this place, whether it's with people that have gone into the ministry as a pastor or the word of sacrament, or it's an elder or deacon or an active church member. I give thanks to God for the privilege of working not only with my colleagues that were here, but with so many of you or your family members. May God continue to bless and make this wonderful tapestry something to behold forevermore. Amen.